What's going on, everybody? It is March 6th. We've got Tuesday slate, and it's a big one. Uh, we've got eight games. Uh, a couple games look great. It's a shame a lot of the, the interesting spots are taken up by teams that are going to smash, like the Warriors playing the Nets, the Raptors playing the Hawks, uh, even the Blazers playing the Knicks to a degree. You know, very big divides between where those teams are, so it makes it a little tricky. Um, last night went really well. Uh, ended up doubling up. Had an entry finish 16th in the uh, in the shot last night. Uh, put up 360 with this one. Um, admittedly, I didn't have a ton of Bojan, but you know, when he goes 44 per, or when he goes for 44 at 4700, uh, it's gonna help. Um, Whiteside <clears throat> was my second highest on center behind Drummond. Uh, I had an overwhelming amount of Nance, uh, significantly more than than the field, and uh, I had like double the amount of Dame compared to the field. So, if you look at the uh, top 100 lineups based on actual score, um, top three guys: Whiteside, Lillard, Nance. All three. Uh, were guys that I was heavier on in the field, so that usually is a recipe for a big night. Um, I was also very heavy on the Celtics chalk. Marcus Smart uh, died on the vine. Rozier was fine. Um, it made me a little nervous. <clears throat> so this lineup here that finished 16th is the highest finishing lineup that had Marcus Smart. Uh, so every point that he would have had, you know, would have gotten me in this area. Eight more points, nine more points puts me at fifth. Um, you know, 11 points puts me at the top. Um, and 11 points is only 24. Like, he, it wouldn't even be some sort of crazy night out of smart. So, I mean, I can't complain. I doubled up, and, you know, that sounds greedy and all, but, man, it's surprising. That's not one – I didn't expect a full-on dud from him, but the they – just started smashing the Bulls out of the gate. They were up 20 almost immediately before Marcus Smart even got on the floor. So, you know, that happens. Uh, point guard was basically just Dame and Bledsoe as the two biggies. Um, I didn't really love Bledsoe last night. He was, it's not like he provided some sort of crazy value. It just happened to be the best. Uh, Mitchell underperformed, which was kind of disappointing. 36 fantasy points, but again, uh, Orlando was just never really in the game. Um, I had a, a pretty decent amount of uh, KCP as well. Mitchell and KCP were probably my two biggest shooting guards, so you know I'm happy to see them pop up here. Uh, ignoring Marcus Smart at this point. Um, small forward, what a crapshoot that is. Uh, Ingles, Justice Winslow, and Bojan are the three small forwards that take up the top 100 lineups for FanDuel. Um, Ingles just went bananas, 48 points on uh, 6,000 salary. Uh, Winslow, you know, 44 on the on the Suns. Just a great play. I wish I would have had a little bit more of him. Um, and then Bojan, just nuclear. Five of seven from three. Just kind of crazy. Power forward, uh, you know, obviously Nance. Um, Jermichael Green probably benefited a bit from the late news of the, the Grizzly scratches. Uh, Blake with another big game. I'm a little disappointed. I don't want to change my night because we had, you know, a, a really good night. Um, I was originally focused on Blake. Didn't expect him to do it, you know, in back-to-back, -back, plus the, the price jump. But 10 of 22 from the field, 8 boards, 5 assists. Just a nice full stat line. Got off to a really hot start. Quieted down a little bit more, but starting to find himself. It's a shame that it doesn't matter. And then uh, I had probably average amount of Olenek, and uh, he played really well. Uh, I was really nervous about Bam getting enough minutes, and ultimately that proved right. Uh, and then at center, it's 100% white side. Um, my other big centers were uh, Horford... And Drummond, I haven't even looked. Yeah, oh, man, how does that happen? How does how does that happen? Like I know he had five fouls, but how does Drummond go five of five from the field, five of five from the line? How does that happen? 
He was perfect from the field. He didn't miss a shot yesterday. Only nine boards, two steals, and a block. It's just the Blake show. Just couldn't do it. Nance was just nuclear. And then uh, my other uh, big time center play was Horford. Uh, he was fine. Only played 22 minutes. Um, he was pretty nasty to start, but they just they absolutely smashed the Bulls. So, what are you gonna do? I'm ready to dive into this eight game slate. Um, I think it's a really, really, really fun night. You got the Thunder Rockets game. Um, Clippers Pelicans should be a blast. It's a shame that it starts at 10:30. Uh, Wizards Heat is like a legitimate basketball game. It's a shame that it's not as inter- interesting as a fantasy game. Um, Golden State and Toronto are both in for me, you know, the in the best matchups, but. Obviously, you need to be very wary about the amount of minutes that the big guns are going to play for those two. So I think that the Pelicans are actually in the best spot out of anybody. They'll be my my first big focus. But what I'm going to do is go back to um, that sort of similar walkthrough of a game-by-game look. But I did move um, the preliminary grades into this chart. So we could have everything here. Um, I'll touch on everyone make a couple tweaks if I see guys that should get bumped up or down and we'll see how that works out so first up is the Hornets Uh, 106.75 implied total is 12th they are two-point underdogs at home Uh, first up you know it looks like uh, it looks like Kemba's got a pretty is in a pretty good spot for FanDuel ends up with the A minus so let's take a look and see where he lands Ooh, not a good spot oh yeah they play Philly Uh, Let me update one little thing here so that this has the little dotted line everywhere. Element OPQ. There we go. Kemba, worst matchup on the board. I forgot they were playing Philly. Uh, Six big games against Philly at the point guard spot, but nine duds. uh, That's tied for the most um, on the slate. Makes me a little nervous. I'm going to knock down Kemba a little bit. Um, we'll see that when we hop back there he's down to a B minus doesn't take much uh, to move through these grades Um, so you know don't take them necessarily as some sort of gospel but like if I've got a guy as an F I probably don't like him if I've got a guy as an A I probably like him you know if a guy's a C there's probably reasons he might look better in a GPP that's what we'll try to talk about so yeah um with that, I, I'm, I'm a little less interested in Kemba. Uh, you know, he's been really steady, multiple 40-point games, but I need a little bit more than that, and I don't really have any interest in somebody that could put up that many duds. Uh, Dwight Howard is a B-plus on both sites, 7,400 and 6,700. You would think he'd get a couple extra minutes to hang with Embiid, um, but... You know, you got to figure that any time Embiid is on the floor, they're definitely going to have one of uh, Howard or Zeller on him. I actually think Zeller might be a better defender against him, but now that that's going to matter. Um, centers against the Sixers. Yeah, eight duds against Philly, only four big games. There were two monsters, which is interesting, but... Eight duds being the second highest total on the board makes me uh, a little bit less interested in in Dwight. So I'm going to knock him down as well. That pulls him down to a straight B. Um, not a ton to like here. I don't have any interest in looking into Batum. Um, I don't have a terribly large amount of interest in Marvin Williams or MKG. But I'm going to check to see if uh, Charlotte shows up anywhere near the top. Small forwards, seven duds, dead last. Six duds, the power forwards, dead last. Or not dead last. uh, Third from the bottom. Um, And then middle of the pack for shooting guards, Batum. Seven big games, uh, seven duds, and a monster. (sighs) That $7,300 price tag is, is a little crazy. Even if I gave... Batum a little bit of a bump for the upside 
you know, he's a D minus. So I don't see really anything here that I would be happy with. Um, there are just better spots out there. Philly's D has been so good. Go to the Sixers. Uh, Sixers 108.75 implied total is ninth. Um, and just for argument, uh, Charlotte has the second worst overall matchup, which you know jives with everything that I just said. Um, Philly is in the middle of the pack, uh, basically dead even. So we'll dig in there. First up is Ben Simmons. Um, B minus on FanDuel right now, B on DK. Now... He's a tricky one for me because I don't really... The classification of his position is sort of uh, ambiguous. You know, he's a, he's a point guard in theory with the size of a small forward, power forward combo. And uh, I don't really know how that matches up. Uh, Fantasy 5x5 five five, uh, lists him here at point guard, which would be middle of the pack. Um... I like to take a look at all of them just for him. So Philly is a little bit below average here for uh, a small forward and dead last for power forward. But I think that we can you know, safely say that that would be Saric. So somewhere in this point guard small forward range. Uh, I'm going to assume that Simmons would get MKG. Oh, that's last night. Have they? Pl oh yeah, they just played. I knew they just played. Simmons went for thirty-five. Um, who guarded him? NBA box score matchup new stats. Easiest way to find it. <laughs> uh, was two nights ago. No, two games ago. March 2nd. Philly beat him by 11. And Ben Simmons was largely guarded by MKG. Um, Sixers were good in that time. Uh, you know, Simmons was fine, so I'm still going to think I'm not interested. You know, seven duds is a lot, no monster games. It is MKG. He is known for his defense. Um, Simmons only had 10 on him in basically that whole game. Um, so it doesn't seem like a spot where, uh, where Ben Simmons is just going to go nuclear. So I'm going to knock him down uh, two more percent just because of the matchup and him being a, a C. So not a ton of interest there in Ben Simmons. Uh, Covington is 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Uh, so these are the guys that I want to actually take a, a deeper look at. Um, who got, or who was, who was guarding Covington in this game? Kemba. Okay. I would never have landed on that. Covington over four from the field with Kemba on him, and then Batum for the others. So, hmm, that's kind of crazy. I mean, it makes sense. You know, it's uh, Covington is like the least involved person on the offense, so they are hiding Kemba there. It makes me feel like Covington could have an okay night. I was highlighting MKG here before, but it was this line, but still seven duds either way. Um, I think I'm just going to leave Covington as is. I'll have a little bit of him in GPPs, but nothing nothing to go crazy over. It's just not the best matchup. Now, Embiid, um, middle of the pack, nothing crazy one way or the other. Uh, he's a B plus on both. Um, I'd be happy to have some Embiid coming off a day's rest, which is helpful. Uh, I see no reason why, you know, targeting Embiid would be a problem. 
there was no uh doesn't appear that the Cody Zeller was healthy for that game. I do remember him sitting out. So he got mostly Dwight and Willie Hernan Gomez. Um he kind of abused Hernan Gomez, but as a team they were under you know, a point per possession. So 4 for 11 on Hernan Gomez. I wonder if they'll use him at all. But didn't do anything crazy against Dwight. Uh the team itself was good, so I think I'm comfortable there. I don't need any more adjustments. Sarge is just way overpriced. Um, not somebody that I'm looking at. Uh, not to mention, you know, worst matchup on the board. 12 duds to power forwards. So I think that we can go ahead and move on from Philly. We'll go to Toronto. 115.25 uh, implied total is fourth. Uh, they are 12.5 point favorites at home against the Hawks. Um, you need to approach this game with caution because the Hawks are in tank mode and the Raptors should have... Here's what's crazy about the Raptors. The Raptors' second unit is the best five-man lineup like in the league, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. And I don't mean like relative to something. I mean, straight up, they have the best differential in the league, or at least they did as of sometime recently. Where where are the lineups at here? Can I search for that? Are there five man? Is there a five man lineup section? I could probably just go to Toronto. <sighs> Okay, lineups. I don't know if you could do it for the league. I know you could probably do it on, uh, what's the site? NBA.com. Look at that. Wright, Van Vliet, Siakam, Jakob Pertl, CJ Miles. Plus 26 per 100 possessions in 209 minutes. They have been ethering people on the second unit. It's so terrifying. 209 minutes is a lot of minutes in a five-man rotation. Like, a lot, a lot. For, for perspective, you know, the Raptors are a relatively, uh, like, healthy and steady team. 655 minutes for their best combo. 209 for the next one. Like, you don't get up into that area all that often. So, uh, this game has the potential to be really ugly. Because if Toronto doesn't get out in front early... That second unit is going to just harm Atlanta. So first up is DeRozan. It's a B-plus on FanDuel and A-minus on DK. I'm scared. Uh, four big games, only three duds, which is great. But nobody has really gone crazy against Atlanta from the shooting guard position. I don't really want to, I don't need to make any adjustments, I don't think. I think that he is right where he needs to be. I'm just a little wary of the minutes. You could tell me De uh, DeRozan plays 28 minutes tonight. The Raptors win by 24. You know, nobody does anything except for C.J. Miles and Norm Powell or something, and I would believe that. Um, I'll have exposure to DeRozan. I'll have some, a little bit of exposure to Lowry, probably to Van Vliet. Um, but it's hard to... to parse out how many minutes these guys are going to get. You could you could take this minutes column and flip it right now and give that whole bench run uh some extra minutes and that wouldn't again, that wouldn't shock me. It's hard to put uh hard to put a stamp on games when two teams have wildly different expectations for what they want to happen. Or I guess they both want the same thing. They both want the Raptors to win. <laughs> uh Lowry C+ plus on FanDuel B on DraftKings. Um, let's think about this here. Matchup says 10 big games, 8 duds, 4 monsters. So it does make me a little bit more interested in uh, in Lowry than DeRozan. Just from the, the big games and the monster games perspective. The 8 duds is scary, but I think that makes Lowry... Uh, a little bit more interesting in the GPP, which for me is my focus. So I would likely have a little bit more Lowry than DeRozan. 
Um, Van Vliet, he sort of gets the same treatment as Lowry. Um, has the potential to have a really big GPP night. Uh, C plus right now on FanDuel, B on DK. I want to give him and Lowry just an extra boost. Yeah. I'll have some interest in Van Vliet. Uh, I think that he'll be like a relatively popular weird play. <laughs> I don't know how, about, how else to say that. Uh, Abaka right now, I don't expect to play enough minutes to really matter. He would have to be hyper-efficient, so he's not really on my radar. Same for Jonas. Um, any interesting matchups here? So small forward, I don't it's not going to be Malcolm Miller, but sure. Uh, small forward is the smash spot. 11 big games against the Hawks, 5 monster games. Um, that's really, really big. It should be, or it normally would have been OG Ananobi, who I probably wouldn't have gone crazy over regardless. In this case, I don't know. It, you know, CJ Miles is in a position to have a decent game. I think that I'm going to, um, has he been playing more three or four? I assume three. God, he's been playing a lot of two. Uh, so they have got different classifications here because they were running him out in weird spots for the Pacers. But okay, I'll give uh, I'll give a little bit of a boost to CJ Miles. I think he'll be an interesting uh, punt. But you know, thirty nine hundred like he's minimum salary on Fanduel. I think that's worth a flyer at thirty nine hundred on DK. I don't think it's really as interesting. Let's go to Atlanta. Uh, Hawks 102.75 implied total is 15th. They have the worst matchup of the slate. Surprise, surprise. You know, Raptors are just really good on D. They take away threes, so, you know, it's I'm inclined to think that we're not going to be looking at too many of the shooters. First up is Torian Prince, um, grading out at a solid F, but expected to play the most minutes by me. Great, great start for them. It should come as no surprise that I'm not interested. St. Land, okay, so point guard is a good spot for Atlanta, oddly enough. Shooting guard is dead last. Small forward, second from the bottom. Power forward, second from the bottom. Below average at center. Good to know. So, Schroeder, you got to look at it. 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Not a guy that shoots a ton of threes, only 21%. Uh, lives in the mid-range. Um, as I said, you know, there's been six big games, four monster games against the Raptors. Uh, that's a pretty high total. Um, four duds isn't anything to be super nervous about. Uh, oddly enough, I think this is a spot where shooter might be in a like a good uh, good situation the only concern i have about him is you know potentially playing less minutes i do want to give him an individual boost which gets him into the b minus b plus range here um minutes have kind of been wonky you know he's playing 32 or 37 in some games they go to ot there no uh, but also playing 27, 27, just played 24 two nights ago. Um, so, or did he, get, was that the game that he got the gate? Or am I thinking of Peyton? No, I'm thinking of Peyton. Uh, I think Shooter could be sneaky here. Uh, I wouldn't mind having him. Bazemore, uh, grading out at the absolute bottom. 11 duds to shooting guards. That's just terrifying. Um, he's actually a B on FanDuel, which is a little bit appealing, uh, C- minus on DK, but with that sort of lack of real upside and the potential to just crater a lineup, I'm going to knock him down even a little bit further. Uh, I don't want him grading out as high as he did. Uh, I think a B- minus looks a little bit better on FanDuel, and he is uh, downright atrocious on DraftKings. John Collins, 
Another guy whose minutes are yo-yoing, 22, 24, 27, 32. Um, you know, you would expect to have a lot of minutes for these guys. You would expect Collins to be playing 30 minutes a night, get his lumps. But 11 duds uh, to power forwards. Uh, I'm going to uh, knock him down a bit as well. It's just uh, terrifying. Um, brings Collins down to a spot where I'll have him in a couple lineups, but nothing crazy. Deadman's off the board for me. Uh, Muscala, Tyler Dorsey, Jalen Moore. They're all they're all off the board for me. Wizards. 104.5 implied total is 13th. They are five-point favorites at home against the Heat. Um, I'm anticipating Wayne Ellington plays tonight for the Heat, so that's just something to keep in mind. And uh, no negatives on Kelly Oubre's MRI. So for right now, he's questionable, and questionable means that I have him in. But if he ends up being out, you'll likely see a big boost to the grades of Otto Porter, Markeith Morris, and Mike Scott. And Jody Meeks would probably sneak into some sort of scenario, but I, I doubt that I would go with him. Um, you know, Washington, third worst matchup. Uh, the Heat, just exceptional on D. But Heat are playing a back-to-back -back on the road. Um... So that is something to, to keep on in the back burner for yourself. We'll start looking at the matchups here. Bradley Beal, B plus and C plus. Um, where is he landing? Relatively decent matchup. Um, eight big games, five duds, which is you know middle of the pack, but eight big games is good. Uh, three monster games is good. I'm usually a little nervous about um, guys going up against Miami, but. I'm not as worried here. You know, the back-to-back -back is tricky. And um, at 8,500, I think Beal's in an okay spot. Hung 49 up uh, two nights ago. I'd be I'd be okay with that. Um, he's going to be somebody that I look at for sure. C-plus is, is a little difficult on DK. But I would have no problem having Beal and barring any changes right now. There's very little value on the board that I've seen. Uh, if anything opens up, um, I'd love to get a little bit more of Beal. Otto Porter, though, uh, relatively low for me, even though he's been playing uh, really well. It's a D plus and a D. Um, I think that he's probably pretty safe for cash. Uh, he's a slightly below average play based on the position. Four big games, five duds, uh, three monsters. I just have a hard time getting there in this particular matchup. Same sort of for Sadoransky. Uh, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. He's kind of come back down to earth now with these games in the teens or the single digits. Um, not somebody that I, I like a lot. Uh, matchup isn't anything to write home about, so I'm, I'm comfortable ignoring there. Uh, power forward and center are both, you know, nothing interesting. It's just the Heat are a good defensive team, and they're playing for something, so it's not as if they're going to be trotting out, uh, you know, trash lineups. So I think that I'll probably only have a decent amount of Beal. Markeith Morris being a, uh, a C on FanDuel is a little interesting, uh, especially uh, pending news for Ubre. Uh, Morris will probably jump up, you know, quite a bit if Ubre ends up being out. But for right now, he's 5,500 on Fanduel, which would be a uh, 27-ish low bar. 34-point game here is great. Um, I would say that Markeith Morris is an okay play for cash, um, and if Ubre goes out, I think he'd look good on both sort of uh, scenarios. The Heat. Uh, 99.5 implied total is 16th, uh, dead last on the night. They're actually the fourth worst matchup, so Washington and Miami both near the bottom. Um, we'll take a walk through the positions here. Uh, slightly above average for Dragic or point guards. Five big games, three monster games, which is always nice. Six duds is a little nerve-wracking. 
Um, I don't see any reason to move that around. Uh, shooting guards have been really bad. Uh, only two big games, four duds, no monsters. Um, it's been a place where uh, nothing interesting has really happened. So that, that'll be something to keep in mind as we look through. Um, small forward, and ignore the names that are here right now. That's just whoever is listed as the starter on Fantasy 5x5. Five five. I try to take a little bit of a more holistic look at it. It's actually not a bad spot. Eight big games against small forwards. Um, nobody has really cratered a lineup, so I'm inclined to look there. Especially if Wayne, if Wayne Ellington is back, uh, small forward will likely be Josh Richardson. That's kind of intriguing. Um, power forward. Eight big games, three duds, three monsters. That's a really, really good spot for you know, James Johnson, Kelly Olenek, Bam, depending on how you want to classify those guys. And then uh, Whiteside is, has a slightly above average matchup. It's a shame that the pricing on these guys is uh, as bad as it is right now. Richardson is getting a straight F from me, <clears throat> but... Sorry, that was a loud slurp. Um, I do want to give him a little bit of a bump. As of right now, I, ha I think that Wayne plays, which moves Richardson to the three, um, a place that I think is a good spot for him. Still only gets up to a D minus. It's kind of concerning. Um, yeah, I don't think that I'm going to be able to get there because of the price. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, it's kind of a bummer. Dragic, 6,900 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. Uh, I've been pounding him lately and just to no avail. The matchup was okay. So, you know, again, we're in the this Hornets-Sixers game and the Wizards-Heat game, and to a degree part of the Raptors-Hawks game. These are all the best defensive matchups on the board. So uh, there's a reason why we're not getting a lot of things we like. Only guy that I think is really viable here would be Whiteside at 7,200, but we do have the Heat coming in on the back-to-back -back on the road. Uh, Whiteside went, went off in 25 minutes last night, 58 fantasy points. Um, I don't see any reason that couldn't happen again tonight. Nothing really to worry about there. Um, I would just be concerned about the back-to-back. -back. And, uh, you know, at a C level for FanDuel, I'll have... I won't disregard him, but he, I don't think that he's going to end up being a focus for me, barring any, like, news. So we'll go to OKC. Um, Thunder, 109.25 implied total is 8th. That's a 4.5 point underdogs at home against the Rockets. Man, this should be a fun game. Um, let's take a look at OKC's matchups first. Uh, slightly below average for Russ. Been 7 duds against the Rockets at point guard, which is kind of scary, especially if you're going to be paying you know, Russ's freight. Uh, a dud will really torpedo your lineup. Uh, depending on who you want to classify as the shooting guard, uh, that's been the spot against Houston. Ten big games, five duds, and uh, four monsters. So the potential is out there. Um, Paul George's matchup is middle of the pack. Uh, feels really GPP-like. Lots of duds, lots of big games. Mello is just bad, <laughs> but middle of the pack matchup. And then finally, Adams middle of the pack as well. So Paul George is A minus and B. Um, 8,600 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. Hmm. Man, that's going to be a tricky one. I don't see it as anything terribly interesting. Needs 43 as a baseline. Hasn't really gone off lately, so... I'm comfortable with where he's at right now. Um, I'll have a decent amount of him just because, you know, 
small forward is rarely a place where things look great. So he kind of he kind of gets moved to towards the top of the list by default. Now Russ, I'm gonna knock down right now. Uh, those seven duds are kind of scary. I can't afford to have a dud in a GPP, and if I have a lot of Russ, I mean that'll put me out to pasture almost immediately. 11-5 on FanDuel, 11-2 on DK. Um, I'm gonna pull him down, you know, quite a bit, or at least quite a bit in his stance. So now he's a B plus on both. Um, the 11-5 price tag is really appealing. That's actually down, isn't it? Oh, it's up. Really? Okay. He dropped and then went back up again. Um, I feel like there are better spots for better studs out there than, uh, than Russ right now. I don't begrudge anybody if they want it. Um, if you think that Russ is just going to come to play here, uh, it's going to be a weird way to look at this, but what's his history against the Clippers? Okay, so net, you know, he didn't do anything crazy against Chris last year, even in the midst of his crazy Russ season. You know, 30 shots and still only got to 45 fantasy points. So I feel pretty comfortable um, knocking Russ down a little bit. And, uh, not really focusing there. Steven Adams, he's just a straight C on FanDuel, C plus on DK. Um, hmm. Needs 35. Yeah, I don't, I'm just comfortable with him there. He's not going to be a focus. We'll look at Mello, who grades out way too high. I'm bringing him down for reasons that aren't matchup based, just the fact that he hasn't been playing well. I want to uh, soften that a bit. I think B minus C plus is the perfect way to describe Carmelo Anthony. Uh, I think he's a sneaky play in a GPP coming off some rest, but other than that, it's hard to rely on him right now. He just hasn't been very good. And I don't really look at uh, Jeremy Grant or anything, so we'll go to Houston. It should be a little bit more interesting. Uh, Houston, so Chris Paul near the bottom, or slightly below average, I guess, for point guard. Seven big games, but nine duds. Um, Chris Paul has been having a bunch of duds lately. Not that he's been playing bad. Obviously, uh, the Rockets are on a bit of a tear. But, you know, 28 fantasy points, 29. He's getting other people involved and being involved in the game in different ways. Harden, number one matchup at shooting guard. Ten big games, five duds, five monster games. OKC has given it up in droves against shooting guards. Um, you would think that he would be getting a, a steady dose of Paul George, but for me, I don't have a terribly large concern with that. Um, he's a B-plus on both sites. I'm actually going to give him an extra percentage boost. And uh, not that that's going to be some sort of big time needle mover. It does get him to the A minus on FanDuel. Uh, he's the best, best stud I've seen so far tonight. Trevor Ariza, not somebody that's really on my radar. Um, but the Thunder do give up a bundle of threes including being the second worst at giving up three-pointers from the corner, which is Trevor Ariza's bread and butter. Um, they have had nine duds, which is concerning. I'm actually going to give Ariza 1% boost just because of those corner threes. I don't want him to fall off the map entirely, but I don't think that um, I'm going to end up with a bunch of them. He's a really sneaky GPP guy, if you think that um, his shot can fall. Now, Chris Paul, uh, he's 8,100 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK. He's grading out as an A- minus right now. Um, that is about to change. Uh, like I said, slightly below average here, but the nine duds, something that I can't afford to have happen. 
it's odd to think about it like that against Russ, but for now, um, I'm going to bring him down quite a bit. Chris Paul is not someone that I have a terribly large amount of interest in. Wow, still coming out as an A. I don't want that. To, I don't want the visual of the A. Are these even refreshing? <laughs> Okay, that's too far. Yeah, I feel more comfortable there. Um, he grades out so well because he's so efficient, but I, I don't trust it. I think that he is more interested in being good for the team than being good for himself. Have they played at all this year? He didn't play. Look, would it surprise me if Chris Paul went ham on Oklahoma City tonight? No, but he's at eighty-one hundred. Um, you mean that means you need higher than forty just to hit five X, and uh, he's only hit forty-one once in the past three weeks. Um, he's been relatively steady, but this doesn't feel like a game where he's just going to go absolutely crazy. Clint Capella, on the other hand, 7,500 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. He's currently graded out as a straight A. Um, problem is, worst matchup, 11 duds. So I have to yank him down a little bit. Um, I'm going to give him a 6% reduction. Same for Nene, not that you're playing him, but just for the visual sake. That brings Capella down to a B plus, A minus. Um, how did Capella play against them last time? 37. Okay. Yeah, like, you know, that's a really solid game. 19 and 10, two steals. Uh, you know, it's hard to be mad about that, but it's also just neutral. So I like Capella. I think he's relatively safe. Um just because of the way Houston plays. But Oklahoma City has cratered centers this year. So that is something to keep in mind if you're willing to take that risk. Dallas Mavericks, 107.25 implied. Did I miss anybody? No, I don't want anybody else. Uh, Mavs, 107.25 implied total is 11th. Uh, they are 4.5 point underdogs at home against the Nuggets. Um, I'm expecting Wes Matthews to be back. He has uh, he missed the last game with an injury, but I'm hoping that you know a night's rest will help him out. Look through for Dallas here. Uh, below average matchup for point guard. Completely average shooting guard. Barnes in a good spot. Seven big games, only two duds, two monsters. We'll look deeper there. Um, you know, below average at the power forward spot. Nine duds. Dirk just dean people up. <laughs> oh, wait, now I got that in reverse. <laughs> uh, never mind. My Dirk joke sucked. And then uh, Dwight Powell, actually. Nine big games, seven duds, three monsters. So. Could be in a position where uh, GPP looks really nice on him. Uh, middle tier matchup for the Mavs. We'll look at Barnes first, who's a straight C. Um, you know, I do like the seven big games with very little dud. Uh, I'm willing to give Barnes a little bit of a boost. I've been liking him lately. I don't know if it's just his price is in a, de in a better spot, but he's just looked better. B minus C plus, I think that's a perfect way to describe him. Um, especially at a small forward position, a B minus is a sneaky good spot. Where is he ranking right now? Yeah, so we haven't made it through everything, but he's already just, a B minus is just the third best grade that exists for small forwards tonight, for perspective. Dennis Smith gets the B minus, B minus, which kind of scares me here. Um, just nothing good has happened against Denver at point guard. Only three big games, no monsters. Duds have been not the best. 
Um, although there have been a ton of difficult point guard matchups for the rest of the uh, people playing today. I feel like I need to bring Dennis Smith down just a little bit. Soften those edges. You know, B minus, B minus. I can see it. Um, he's probably relatively safe for uh, for most lineups, but he's probably not a direction I'm going. Wes Matthews, I I'm not super interested in him coming off of the injury. Uh, it's not like it's a crazy good matchup for him or anything. Uh, I'm, I'm comfortable to move on. Now, Dwight Powell, uh, I like him a lot here. Just regularly grading out as a straight C, but... You know, as we looked at over here, I know my head was probably over that every time I did this. Uh, second best matchup for centers. Nine big games. Um, I'm willing to roll the dice a little bit more with uh, the duds based on the, the bigs and monsters. I don't mind having as many duds there because of playing GPPs. Um, I can handle a dud at 5,700 a lot better than I can handle a dud at 12. Um, so based on that second uh, ranking um, for centers, I'm actually going to give him a three and a half point boost. I want to have uh, a decent amount of him. Brings him up to the B minus C plus range, which I think is probably a, a real realistic spot for him. Then finally, we've got Dirk. Uh, you know, tricky spot. I don't really see the need to go crazy for him there. I think he's fine. Um, Put up 33 and 32 in his last two. Dude's still balling, but he's just too expensive to be really happy about it. Nuggets. 111.75 uh, implied total. Like I said, they're 4.5 point favorites. This is one I'll be interested to look at. As of right now, prices on FanDuel look like they're atrocious. So Denver, middle of the pack at point guard. Seven big games, seven duds, two monsters. Probably not going to be a Murray night. Um, middle of the pack, shooting guards. Now, small forward, three big, eight dud, one monster. That is uh, less appealing, which is good because I never look for reasons to play Wilson Chandler. So anytime I can guarantee that I don't makes me happy. Not a bad spot for Millsap. Um, they haven't really killed any power forwards, which makes sense. I mean, if Millsap can get enough run against Dirk, he'll kill him. <laughs> and then uh, Jokic in a relatively decent spot. So Gary Harris, D- minus and C-. minus. I don't see the need to really change his price, or to change his outcome much. He would need 35, which he's done in his last two, but these have been his two biggest games in a while. Um, they are coming in with a little bit of rest, which is nice, but I think I'm willing to give him a boost just because of the shot profile. But it's marginal. Uh, Will Barton, sort of the same scenario. You know, we need him to get to 40 over here on FanDuel. He's a much better play on DraftKings. Um, you know, he's gotten to 40. It does have the 50-point game. Barton has been playing a lot better. Um, but with Millsap back, and I mean back, back now, uh, I feel like Barton's probably overpriced. He should probably have more like... Gary Harris's salary. Gary Harris should probably have more like Jamal Murray salary. All these guys need to come down a couple hundred dollars because of Millsap being back. It's a lot different having Paul Millsap out there than uh, than Trey Lyles. You know, a lot more is going to go through Paul Millsap. It really changes the offense. Jamal Murray is not something I'm fond of. Sixty nine hundred and sixty four hundred. One of these guys, you know, will likely go off, but. Uh, you know, I've said it since Millsap got back. Until these salaries uh, recalibrate themselves with him being back, I, I'm just not interested. Jokic at 9,700, though. Uh, 9,500 on DK. I'm okay giving him an extra percentage point. Uh, 
C plus C plus. Let's see on. You know, he, he's grading out as a pretty decent option at center. There's not a lot to like right now. Like I said, there's not a ton of value out there. So uh, building a lineup that is balanced, is, I think, is going to be crucial as of right now. Um, F. Wilson Chandler. Let's go to Millsap. 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Uh, we saw that uh, he had a relatively good matchup. Um, fifth best. Uh, decent amount of big games, but no real downside. Um, I think that... I would have no trouble rostering Millsap at 6,100. Um, did get up to 38 fantasy points in his second game back, which would you know you would be happy with. Um, I want to give him an extra little boost just because of the matchup. And yeah, I'll probably have a pretty solid amount of Paul Millsap tonight. Portland. Uh, the Blazers are nine and a half point favorites at home uh, facing the Knicks. They have the sixth highest implied total. Uh, I hope everybody saw Dame Lillard's fourth quarter. Uh, if you don't, check out House of Highlights on uh, Instagram. They've got it all clipped together. Bombed like a bunch of, you know, 30 foot threes. Hit four straight threes at one point. Um, which makes me happy because I had like 50% Dame Lillard last night. So. All good in the hood with Dame Lillard. Um, Knicks are bad. Uh, Portland's got a really good matchup here. Let's walk through the positions quickly. Uh, oddly enough, at point guard, seven duds. No big games. No real, you know, total big games. Only four big games, one monster. Um, Portland on the back-to-back, -back, which is a little concerning. Um, I don't mind as much because they're at home tonight. But... It is something to keep in mind. Shooting guard, you know, CJ's right in the middle of the pack. Um, I think that it, he'll probably end up looking okay for a GPP. Small forward, also middle of the pack. No major duds, so, you know, I can entertain that. That's one I'm going to be interested in right there. Uh, I want to see his price, but Aminu, number one matchup for power forwards against the Knicks. Nine big games. Um, you know, four monsters, four duds. It does make me a little concerned thinking that that probably happened, you know, that mostly happened with Porzingis on the court, but I can only assume that they've been worse with Porzingis off than on. And then finally, um, Nurkic near the bottom in defensive matchup, which is, again, f sort of flies in the face of what you would think. Um, but... It's sort of the inverse of Rudy Gobert from yesterday. Uh, the numbers for centers against the Jazz haven't been the best, even though people, even though it's you know widely accepted that Rudy Gobert is uh, you know probably the best defensive center in basketball. But he's impacting the entire team, not necessarily just his position. And I think this is the same sort of thing for someone like Cantor who is bad on defense, but he's bad and it affects the entire team, not just the opposing center. I hope that makes sense. There's a lot less like guarding in the post. So let's take a look here. Dame is a B plus, A minus, 9,700, 9,400. Um, it's not a crazy smash bot for me. I liked him a lot last night. He's been playing great. You know, multiple 50 or 60 point games in the past three weeks. It does have me a little nervous that they've given up that many duds. Um, did his price do anything overnight? He's up $300. Only way that I would like Dame is if we thought they kept this close, but... You know, Portland wants this game a lot more than the Knicks do, so I'm comfortable leaving Dame right there. Um, he should grade out well, uh, but I'm not as head over heels as I was yesterday. Uh, CJ, um, also, you know, middle of the pack. He's C plus, B minus. That 7,800 price tag is... Oh, man, it's so tough to get there for him. 
I think that he's in line to have a pretty decent game. Um, problem is he's just too expensive. It's hard to get there because you're looking for a 40 plus point game and he just doesn't do that. I think that CJ looks exceptional in cash tonight. Um, I don't know if I'm going to end up having a bunch of them in a GPP. Aminu. Hmm. 5,400 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. I prefer to get Aminu when he is uh, under 5,000. So 5,400 is not my favorite, but it's the best matchup. Numero uno there. So I need to give him a boost, and I think that'll make him look a little bit better. Not one that was supposed to be a four. That should help him tremendously. Aminu up to a C plus, B minus, and that's where he should be. Um, it, you know, you don't want to be giving him grades that make him look like he's better than he is, but he will be one of the better options at uh, small forward. If I go there again now, he's going to climb the ranks. Um, I mean, at power forward, rather. Uh, he'll be one of the better options from a value perspective here in this C-plus quagmire. So I'd be okay pairing him with one of the bigger studs at that position. Nurkic, um, you know, not wild about him. Dude's not been playing the minutes that you would like. Uh, played 29 last night off of a night where he played 18 or a night that he played 19. I can't really figure out the rhyme or reason for that. Had a really good game last night, putting up 40. Um, he wasn't a guy that I was on because I just, I can't figure out the rotation. Maybe I'm missing something obvious, but I just can't figure out what they're doing with him right now. And uh, I don't know. It's like It could just as easily be Ed Davis or Zach Collins got nine minutes last night instead of the 28 that he got the night before. I'm having trouble managing it and like for those reasons it makes it really hard to uh to want to go that direction not safe in cash at all in my opinion um i think everything that i see here looks pretty good mo harkless missed another game i have him in now with some decreased minutes if we can get some news that he's going to be out you know that'll give evan turner a boost check out the knicks Knicks 102.75 implied total is 15th, uh, nine and a half point underdogs. Um, second worst point guard matchup, eight duds to the Blazers this year. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, decent spot for shooting guards, you know, nominally Courtney Lee in this case, but nothing crazy against CJ. Or I guess probably technically Dame. depending on uh, who's guarding who. Um, middle of the pack for Hardaway and small forwards. Middle of the pack for power forwards. Decent spot for Cantor. Not a lot of duds. Um, they have had two monsters. It's kind of I'm kind of just indifferent here. So Hardaway, D minus, D plus. Uh, it is his kind of game. You know, should be able to get himself into the mid range a little bit. But 6,200 is big. He's a GPP only guy just because of the way that he shoots in that he shoots poorly. Um, I don't see it as any sort of uh, exciting spot. Moutier is 4,700 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. Um, I'm actually going to knock him down just so I don't tempt myself into taking him. Yeah, that makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. No no thanks on Frankie Smokes. Beasley's probably uh, overrated here. He's just been not very good playing in these mid-20s minutes, just not getting the shots that he's been looking for. Even if he did get to this 27 range, you're still only barely hitting value. Only way that uh, Beasley becomes a good play is if they unleash him and let him shoot, and it doesn't appear that they've been doing that. Um, so I don't really see anything on the Knicks that is interesting to me. Um, Cantor and O'Quinn have been getting weird minutes, 22, 17, 30. O'Quinn, 26, 16. So much like the Blazers, I don't have any clue who they're going to play. If you if you knew you were going to get 25 minutes out of Kyle O'Quinn, you fire him up in a heartbeat. 
If you knew you were going to get 29 minutes out of Enos Cantor, you probably fire him up in a heartbeat. Both of these guys are too variable in their playing time, so you can't go there. Go to Golden State. Warriors, 122 implied total is first, obviously. <laughs> they are 14-point favorites at home against the Nets. It should come as no surprise that they are the best matchup. Um, let's see what we got. Curry is first. 12 big games, 6 duds, and 7 monster games against the Nets. 7, I believe, is the highest total of any monsters at any position for any situation tonight. Yes, it is. Something to keep in mind there. Uh, Clay, though. Second worst spot for shooting guards. 9 duds. Um, then we've got Durant is in the middle of the pack, more GPP-like. Uh, power forward is fourth, which is pretty nice. Three monster games is good to see. And then if we count JaVale as the starter, he's got the best one. But 13 big games against the Nets, four monsters. We know that the Nets uh, eat dongs against uh, big guys, so I wish that mattered here. Draymond is a BB plus. Um, I'm gonna give him a slight boost, but it's it's something to be wary about just because of this matchup. Blowout potential is in full effect here. Uh, Durant is a B and a B plus. He's not somebody I want to move, but I'm gonna end up having a bunch of him. Uh, mostly because of the positional situation. There aren't a ton of options here at small forward, and that usually means that you end up having uh, a lot of the bigger dudes. Durant gets to the line a lot, which is uh, intriguing. Um, does take a lot of shots in the mid-range, which Brooklyn is not afraid to give up. So, you know, if Durant wants it, I think that the game is there for his taking. I am going to neuter Clay, though. Um, I don't want to accidentally end up with really any part of him. D-plus across the board. Yeah, again, he can shoot the lights out and be in any game, but for me, um, this doesn't grade out as a great matchup for him. Curry, B-plus, A-minus. You know, it's, it's one of those things where how do you weigh whether or not the Warriors are up by 40 with four minutes left in the third quarter? Because if they are, you know, Curry probably did it. So I don't think that, I wouldn't expect like a 90-point game out of Curry or anything crazy. Uh, because I just don't think he'd be on the floor enough to do it. But I don't see any reason why he couldn't get the value. Um, 12 big games, 7 monsters is really appealing. 6 duds does make it a little GPP-like. Um, I do want to give Curry the slightest boost. I think that makes it a little better. The B plus on FanDuel, A minus on DK. I think that tempers the expectations enough um, by having to play the Knicks. And I don't want to look at anybody else there. Or not by playing the Knicks, by playing the Nets rather. Now, speaking of those Nets, uh, Nets have a middle of the pack matchup. Um, 108 implied total is 10th. While the Warriors are good, um, they play at such a torrid pace that you know it does get Brooklyn some uh, some extra run. Three additional possessions more than they would normally get. This is the second most on the board. Uh, point guard has been a middle of the pack matchup for them. No crazy duds. Um, shooting guards have been put on lock. That's uh, you know the Clay Clay Thompson special there. Nine duds. It's brutal. Um, but small forwards, 10 big games, 6 duds, 4 monsters. Uh, that's something I wouldn't have expected, but, you know, it kind of makes sense now that I think about it. It's not like Durant's actually guarding nominal small forwards usually, unless they're the LeBrons or Giannis's of the world. He's probably not gu guarding Alan Crabb. He's probably guarding a better four in those scenarios. Uh, nothing great at power forward and right at the bottom for centers. So, Alan Crabb, 4,900 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. Um, 
he had that big game, right? Or was that Levert? That was Levert. You need 25 out of Crab. I do want to give him a little bit of a boost just because um, it seemed to grade out pretty well. But I don't think that's going to put him in any sort of territory where you're really wild about him. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, I want to knock down. Um, he seems to be in a really horrible spot. Uh, Dinwiddie is just, for me, too expensive. You know, at 7,000, you're looking for 35. He hasn't done that at all in three weeks. Uh, I think that D looks really, uh, really logical. <laughs> Damari Carroll is overpriced. Uh, Jared Allen needs to be knocked down a bit. Somebody, and it sounds dumb, somebody from Brooklyn is going to have a big night. Might be Karis LeVert? I don't know. He had 47 fantasy points in his last game, but this is not a spot I want to be. I don't think that anybody, unless we get some news that will consolidate the minutes, I don't think anybody's going to be able to go crazy. And then finally, the last game, which is arguably the best game on the slate. Clippers hosting the Pelicans. Clippers two and a half point favorites at home against the Pels. Um, third and fifth best matchups on the board. Uh, Pels D, oddly enough, been uh, really good lately. So that is something to keep in mind. Let's look through here now for, um, for the Clippers first. Uh, Clippers... Second best matchup for point guards. Ten big games, only one dud and three monsters. I like it. Shooting guard, also third best. or Well, not also, is third best. So that's second and third in the guard spots. Um, you don't see Lou Williams' name here because he's not nominally listed as a starter, but uh, that makes me really like Lou Will. Um, slightly above average matchup for whoever's at small forward. I don't know if they've uh, resurrected Wes Johnson yet, but if they have, it's not the worst spot. Tobias Harris at power forward. 11 big games at power forward here. Uh, six duds. Most of that was probably accrued with the boogie-AD combo. And then uh, everybody is basically in a, an above-average spot in terms of big games, duds, and monsters here, which kind of flies in the face of the way the Pelicans manage everybody as a team. I think it just means that there's going to be uh, you know, potential for big games and potential for busts. That sounds so dumb. It's so, so vague. I sound like some ESPN talking head. So Tobias Harris, C-plus on both, 7,900. You need 40-plus. He's gone for 58 and 54 in the last three weeks. Um, basically in the last two weeks. It's going to be on mostly Miritich, you would think. So I'm comfortable there. I'd like to boost up Tobias Harris a little bit. Lou Will already grading out as an A across the board. I am more than okay with that. And I'm going to stick with it. He's one of my favorite players on the board tonight. Let me give him his boost as well. Yeah, Lou Will just looking absolutely tremendous. Uh, Austin Rivers, while he deserves the boost, he's not really going to be in play for me. 6,300 is a little healthy. But DeAndre, B-plus on FanDuel. C on DK. He needs 40. Um, went for 44 in his most recent game. 54 in the game before that. Uh, he's in fourth. So six big games, two monsters, five duds. It's a little scary for a GPP, but I do want to give him a little nod. Um, DeAndre should be able to handle a Mecca Oka 4 at this point. <laughs> If he plays, I'm going to end up having a lot of Tobias Harris. I'm going to end up having a lot of Lou Williams. I'm going to end up having a pretty solid amount of DeAndre Jordan. I want to give uh, Taya Dosich a little bit of a boost here. I'll end up having uh, 
an okay amount of him. I think he'll be one of the better value point guards at 4,400. 4,700 on DK is a little bit less appealing. But right now, um, I'm going to have a lot of ownership wrapped up in these three guys. Finally, we go to the Pels. Uh, 117.25 implied total is third. They are two and a half point underdogs in LA. Um, I'll take that quick look at the Pelicans here. Rondo in a pretty good spot. Uh, fourth best uh, point guard ranking. Uh, Drew is sort of middle of the pack for shooting guards. Uh, small forward is, you know, dead average. Power forward is average. And um, center average as well. So I think that I'll boost Rondo just a little bit, but I won't need to touch anybody else. I'm already liking Rondo tonight, so that's helpful. AD is an A- minus on both sites. I'm cool with that. Um, obviously, the 12-5 price tag is terrifying, but this is a guy that went for 96 fantasy points and twice in four days. So uh, they need the victory. I would expect them to come hard, and I don't exactly think they have anybody that's really going to check AD. So as long as he shows up, I think that he's a relatively safe play. I'm going to have a bunch of him. Same thing sort of goes for Drew. Uh, his price is just kind of getting to a point where I'm a little nervous. 8,500 on FanDuel is a little high. 8,200 on DK looks okay. Um, he's been really steady. I'd have no problem firing up Drew in a cash game. He's probably one of the safest guys on the board tonight. But I'm a little apprehensive of his price point. I'm going to have him, and I'm going to have a decent amount of him. I'm going to have stacking this game is going to be one of my major major focuses, but... For now, I'm a little less enthused about AD, or about Drew than I am AD. Etan Moore is, a, you know, your standard rotational small forward. Is he a small forward on here? Am I talking out of my ass? Yeah, small forward. I don't know what I was thinking there. Um, you don't mind having him. He could go off. I don't see any signs to point either direction in any particular major way, so... The one guy I would want to focus on would be Rondo. I've got him in for 32 minutes. He's at 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DraftKings. He's an A uh, on, on both sides of that. It's a great matchup for him. Um, put up 38 in his last game, 42 previously. He had a 43-point game recently. All of those games would be monster, monster games at that price. Um, he needs to be owned and owned relatively big. Um, and then finally, Miritich. Uh, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. I've got him as a B and an A-. minus. Um, he hasn't been going absolutely crazy. I'm going to ding him a little bit just because I think he's doing a little less than, uh, than he had been doing in the past, and he's a little overrated. But I do want to have a, a decent amount of him. I think he's in a great spot. So that's where I'm at right now. I did like the flow of that a little bit better than having to, you know, enter threes and fours for tiers. Uh, I'd like to think that I hit on everybody in, in the best possible way. Um, so if you have questions about anybody that I've, you know, didn't really talk about, you know, feel free to ask. Hit me up on Twitter or the comments or anything. I'm, I'm happy to go into more detail. Uh, I have a feeling I've been going for a really long time. But let's dump in the projections now, and um, we'll see what pops up. Excited to play. Keep that momentum from last night alive. So let's change that, and we'll go bump up the randomo, and we'll go. Top 100, let's do it. So, and this is why I uh, I got off of the tiers, because ultimately I'm going to be talking about the guys that are going to be popping up in my optimizer, because I'm looking at the numbers. So we've got uh, Lou Will in 64% sounds great to me. A lot of Rondo, Ted Dosich, Millsap, AD. So I would want to start with Lou Will first and foremost. And then grab Rondo. Um, 
I think that I probably want to gra grab Paul Millsap at that price. And then... Let's see, we get 67, eight lineups of AD, only two of Harden. Um, I'd like to look at Harden first. Not as lovey-dovey with that one, so I think Harden might be a tougher sell. Let's look at AD, which would allow me to grab Teo. White and Capella. Yeah, that makes sense. Both Bs. I think out of everything that I see here, you know, something like this one and this one both look pretty good. Capella or Dwight, you can go either way. I'd be fine with Barnes. And then Levert and Eton Moore would sort of be the, uh, the, vari the variables in that lineup. So we'll check out DK now. We will be going live tonight at 6, so come join in. Uh, I think last night went really well. <sighs> Bump up the random. And we go. A lot of Van Vliet. It's a low price point on DK. Is coming out as a B plus. Temper that. It's more cash than GPP. Lou Will and Rondo are the two A's on DraftKings right now. So I'm going to grab those guys first. And then AD, Curry, Embiid, Lillard, DeRozan, Green, and Capella. So I feel safe grabbing Capella. I feel safe grabbing DeMar. A lot of Beasley. Probably might need to nerf him a little bit more. That's a fun lineup right there. Schroeder, Van Vliet. Covington, Millsap, Capella, Rondo, DeRozan, Lou Will. I would like that in a DraftKings GPP. But really, I would be I'd be building around a lot of Lou Will and Rondo. Um I'd try to work in AD as much as I could. But there's a lot of value there. Uh but yeah, Lou Will and Rondo would be my focus on DraftKings. So that's it, guys. Um, I hope this new sort of uh, new way is going to be better. Um, still trying to get my sea legs for it. So let me know in the comments if you see anything you want me to change. But like and subscribe. Check me out on Reddit. Follow me on Twitter. You guys know the drill at this point. I'll see you guys tonight.